If you guys have your Bibles, let's open up to Psalm 127. We'll read verse 3, 4, and 5. Oh, let's do Proverbs first, and then we'll go to Psalm 127. Proverbs 22, verse 6, New King James Version. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Psalm 127, verse 3, 4, and 5. Behold, children, everybody see children? Children. Oh, hallelujah for them, amen. Our heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy, happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Învață pe copil calea pe care trebuie să o urmează și când va îmbătrâni, nu se va abate de la ea. Uh, Psalm 127. Iată, fii sunt o moștenire de la Domnul, rodul pântecele este o răsplată dată de el. Ca săgețile în mâna unui războinic, așa sunt fii făcuți la tinerețe. Ferice de omul care își umple tolba de săgeți cu ea, căci ei... Nu vor rămâne de rușine când vor vorbi cu vrășmașii lor la poartă. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. As you walked in, um, there was a table out there. There were some books about loving a child, how to from Dr. Ross M. Uh, M. Ross Campbell, uh, a man of God. He's gone on into glory. Um, but uh, Ross Campbell was a man who uh, went on, focused on the family, as many of you know, and uh, wrote about how to really love your child. Talked about four things I wanted to share with that. It's your book for free, one per family, as long as supplies last. And as a OBJ, as a habit, uh, we give from, from senior pastor in the entire church, Pastor Daniel will give it to every family Karaduche for baby dedication to their child. So it's a gift that we want to put into your hands. But as you walked in, we highlighted Psalm 127, 3, 4, and 5, and we gave that arrow, a sajata, that we're going to speak to, tonight about uh, raising arrows. Amen. I am raising arrows. And for those parents that are here tonight, um, we want to talk about that. If you're too old, uh, there's another generation, amen, you can pray for. If you're yet to be married, Take notes that God wants to speak to you tonight. Um, as I was thinking about tonight, I wanted to do something different, and I hope you can um, help me and we can do this together, because I wanted to be a little more interactive. We have many young people here tonight. Um, before I go on, if you're in middle school, or you're going to be in middle school this year, would you please stand up? For all the middle school kids, the homeschool kids, there goes, there's a couple, all right. And how about high school? Keep standing. Everybody going into high school, finishing up high school, would you please stand? And then college, if you're going to be in college this year, would you please stand? Okay, sign up. Okay, there's some shy kids. God bless you. Mom and dad, say amen. 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 And what we want to do tonight, you guys have a seat. What we want to do tonight is we want to jump in some of the questions that you're going to have as you face that. And I gave you guys a sheet of paper as you walked in, and you're going to help me. So... Uh, I'm warning you right now, go ahead, get your Bible app out, get your phone out, your Bible app, Bible Gateway Bible app, I'm going to uh, read, we're going to do a study of the Word of God together. If you have your Bible, bring that out, and we have the Bible verses there, and you have it there in front of you. We're going to do this together. Um, but I want to spend just a few moments, uh, about five minutes teaching, and we'll go through these questions. I think it'll be very helpful. I even remember in my own life blessing that they were to me. Uh, let's see if this works. Perfect. I am raising arrows, as it says. Um, Barna, and if you guys know Barna, Barna is a uh, faith-based group who does study about uh, Christians, committed Christians, and non-committed Christians. And you guys are thinking, what is the difference? Committed Christians are what actually have an active life. They, they don't just say, I'm a Christian. They're part of a church. They Baptized, they actively read scripture and committed Christians. But what they found in February of this year, just a few weeks ago, that over half of Gen Z teenagers feel motivated to learn more about Jesus. So here in the United States, that's what that looks like. Now, real quick, what does Gen Z look like? 
So here tonight we got Generation Baby Boomers. Boomers for the young people means everybody came back from World War II and boom, had a baby. Hence, baby boomers. That's true. I'm not making that up. That's exactly 100%. Then uh, Generation X from 1960 to 79, whereabouts, um, they're the, the next generation. Uh, generation Y or millennials, like me, um, 1980, 81 to 95, and then Gen Z, 96, 97. Congratulations. We're going to be talking about you tonight a little bit and what really got me to kind of commit to you. I want to show you just three quick surveys and then we'll jump into them. So, number one, commitment to Jesus. I want to point this out because it's very important. We live in a nation that, yes, when you open up a U.S. dollar, it says, in God we, right? You see that. We live in, in, the, in the capital of the United States is Washington, D.C. I don't know if you know, but the highest building in national in Washington, D.C. cannot be taller than the Washington Monument. Do you guys know that? It's a law. Washington, D.C. You are not allowed, I don't care if you're Donald Trump or Obama, it doesn't matter. You cannot build a building in D.C., that's taller than the Washington Monument. I don't know if you know that. Okay, why is that important? At the very tip of the Washington Monument is the words, God alone be the glory. Every morning when over the United States, the capital, the sun comes up, the first thing it touches in the capital city is Soli Gloria. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, our children, baseball games, football games, you know, one nation under God, indivisible. So a lot of those things are like, yes, David, we are a Christ-centered, God-centered nation, but that's not true. Christians, especially Generation Z, all the students that you saw stand up are a minority. Only 32% of teenagers their age are committed Christians. Some of you are like, ah, that's less. <laughs> Some of you are, oh, that's more. But there's about 32% that are committed Christians, that want to live for God, are committed to living a life of holiness, committed not to have sex before marriage, committed not to take the things of this world, only about 32%. Uh, in the church, we would like to think it's more, right? Or maybe. But I just want to show you that it is a minority. Um, two more. Teens, so this is a question. If you wanted to learn more about Jesus, okay, where would you go or what would you consider a trustworthy source? So we're living in a generation where there's fake news, left and right. Uh, Twitter is changing his name to X. People are blocking him left and right on Instagram, saying this is fake, not fake. So the number one force generation Z goes to is what? What do you think? The Bible. The Bible. Bible. So, I don't know if you know, at New Hope Church, if you want a Bible, English, Romanian, English, Romanian, Row English, we will put it in your hand. You do not have to pay a dime. Amen? I don't care if we bankrupt the church, but we will give you a Bible. And we will give as many people as ask for a Bible. Uh, the second was a Christian. The third was a church leader. The fourth was family. But they are yearning. Teenagers, I don't know if you realize this. You might, oh, they're Muslims. Oh, they're atheists. Or the campus. Listen, young guys, young ladies, if you're in high school, middle school, college, your generation wants to learn about Jesus. That's what it, they want to know. They want to know why, why is this? We're going into that question. And the last is they ask this question throughout the rest of your life, Generation Z, how motivated are you to continue learning about Jesus Christ? So of those 32% of committed, 80%. That's a very, very good majority. See, they are committed to learning about Jesus for the rest of And that? So, let's jump into Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, sparks fly. Amen? Certur wale kan sare. You know, um, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the counter. Of this friend, I will tell you that I've learned in the 42 years that God has given me breath that many times it is not your friends that help you the most, but it's those who oppose you, who, who give you why do you believe that? The chicles, 
Why? And those have helped me mature in my lifetime. Uh, I'll give you one quick biblical example, Fratelli Giulio Portate, King David. Nobody knew about King David until he killed, until he killed every, what everybody else was afraid of. Sometimes God is going to give you Goliaths because he wants to promote you. Stop crying about the Goliaths and kill them. Amen? That's what God's given you. The, Lord, I want the opportunity. Lord, I want the promotion. Here's your Goliath. Get your, get your slingshot. Kill him. And God's going to promote you. Amen? That's what he wants to do. So tonight, um, I wanted to start off with these questions. I wanted to kind of instruct you of my own personal life. I remember going to high school and going to college. And entre bud. The chill medj la biserik de to chia kolo magic. I don't know. Pastila chit. Hi, Vino, you know, and what did I have to say? And, and we're going to have some interactions. So I hope you have your Bible apps out, both guys and girls, females and males, and then um, have your Bibles out too. And I'm going to start with this. When, um, in, in my life, first question, but when you, you understand that a mom and dad, all the mom and dads say amen. If you understand, and I didn't, I didn't bring out the bow out there, so you guys don't shoot me. But if you guys would understand, the Bible says like an arrow. When your children are young, like an arrow. If you give them that tension. See, there's that tension. It's supposed to be tension. Amen? They want to live like the world. They see what the world is living. And you're teaching the word of God. There should be tension. Amen? There should be tension. Okay, that's tension. Everybody else is doing it, right? And then what do you say? Everybody else is jumping off the cliff. Are you going to jump off the cliff? No. Use your head. So you're teaching your children and moms and dads, right? You know this. Amen. There's going to be tension, right? Well, why, if you're a young lady, why can't I wear those shorts? Why can't I wear that outfit? Why can't I show my body like everybody else? You teach them. Right? One of the things I always taught at youth night was, if you're a young lady and you're attractive, God's going to use that to bring men, women. I don't know. They're going to bring, you're going to bring someone to youth and they're going to get saved because you're beautiful. That's fine. Now, on the other hand, if you dress a little bit provocatively, you are a co-worker. Hear me. I'm not offending you. I'm telling the truth. You are a co-worker with the devil. If you come to church dressed provocatively, you want to get the attention of men, young men, old men. I'm going to tell you like it is, like the Bible says. You don't want to give the attention to glory to God. You want the attention to go to you. See? It's very simple. So the Bible says when you're a parent, I suggest you have these young men, young women in your household that they are suggests there are arrows for you in your life that will be a blessing. And the wonderful thing about these suggests, I don't know if you th thought about it, but you let go from far away. From far away. And they keep going and going and going, even past your lifetime. Your children, not just your legacy, but God's legacy, they continue because of what you put in them, what you've prepared them for. Because that is what the Bible, the Bible says they are a reward from God. See, we live in a generation, Fratzelon, yes or no? Everybody says, finish your college, get your job, build your house, then at 35 years old, have a baby. That's what a lot of people are not to say. You know, I, I can't make a baby just yet. I got to first finish my career, start my job, build my house, get good financially, do all this stuff, and then have a baby. But the Bible, does that what the Bible say? Nun convine. I know. Me either. Amen. That's the word of God. Musplache, take it up with him. I'm just a preacher. I'm just a messenger tonight. If you don't like it, take it up with him. But the Bible says, be a young dad. Don't be old and cry. <laughs> be all, be, young, be energetic. Now, I'm praying that God gives me children a lot of I'm okay with that. <laughs> but I started when I was young because I wanted to be a young, young dad. Um, okay, so the first question, why trust the Bible isn't, isn't it written by other people? So this is one of the top questions in high school, college. They're going to ask you, young man, young woman, well, what's wrong with you, man? Don't you know the Bible's written by some other schmuck in a cave long ago? 
And by the way, just before we dig into these five questions, one last thing. Um, if someone comes to you, James, Brianna, if someone comes to you and they're saying, hey, I want to ask you a couple questions. Listen to me. Be wise. For every question they ask, you get to ask them a question. Amen? Amen? Wait a minute. They can ask you 15 questions. You're not allowed. No, 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 no. So remember, be wise. If they're going to ask you questions, ask them a couple questions. Well, you, why don't you believe? Why don't you go to church? Do you not think there's a heaven to hell? Do you not think there's a heaven So you have the right to ask them a question, just like they ask you a question. So first question. A lot of times, uh, this is from the Barna group. Why trust in the Bible if you're atheist, a Muslim, isn't it written by other people? So I'm going to start this off. I'm going to go, so we're going to go male, female. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. So we're going to go from that. Remember, Gen Z, what is their number one source that they go to when they want to learn about God? The Bible. So that's where we're going to start. You can give your experiences. You can give uh, some stories of your mom and dad. But uh, we're, I'm going to read this one. And then, okay, I need a female to be ready with Luke chapter 1. All right? So I'm going to read the second Timothy chapter 3.16, and then we'll so we'll stand up or sit down. It's fine. We're going to do old school tonight. So the Bible says, second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Young men, hear this. All scripture, everybody say all. All scripture is God breathed and is valuable for teaching the truth, convicting of sin, correcting your faults, and training in right living. Hallelujah. So why, why do I need to trust the Bible? Is it All right, we need a, a, a lady, a young lady, old lady, married woman, young, whatever. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to call some names out. Don't make me do it. Sora, Kutare, Hines. Romaneste, we don't discriminate. We don't discriminate. Amen. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll, I'll come on. I need a, a man. Luca, capitolo 1, versetto 1, 2, 3, 4. Costello, I'm going to call you in a second. Come on, brother. You don't wear your glasses. <laughs> uh, come, on. come on, church. Luke chapter 1. This is the reading, declaring of God. Here we go. All God's people said, uh, I need you to get used to when the word of God is being declared, say amen. When you're saying amen, you're saying, yes, I believe. Asha Sophia. You're saying, yes, I, I sustain that. Uh, so here in Luke chapter 1, this is a doctor. A doctor. He's a physician. He wrote the gospel according to Luke. He said, okay, listen, you're in high school. You're talking about your friend, about Jesus. He said, hey, there's this doctor. His name was Luke. And he said, I'm going to tell you about what everybody else has been talking about. And that's how he starts the gospel, Luke chapter 1. Um, all right, I need um, a sort of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Come on. So here we have another Apostle Paul. Remember, he was a, you know, a man of seminary, if you want, right? Let's use contemporary terms, right? Let's not talk about religion. He was a man of seminary. He went he had higher learning. He knew multiple languages, right? He had a higher doctor. So here he's saying, I want to talk about how he met Jesus. So that's 1 Corinthians 3, 4, 5, 6. And then, Frate, brother, chapter 4, verse 12. There is a 
Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. So the word of God is living and active, it says in the English translation. So it's not just something that was dead, but continues to be alive in us, right? Jesus, he was the living word. He was the word. He was the word. The word became flesh and lived and dwelt among us. So when you have Jesus, you have the word of God. All right, let's go to, uh, so let's let other people back here. That's, if you've already read, let's let other people. Uh, number two, how could a God, this is a very, very important. This is how they try to get you all the time. How could a God allow so much evil, pain, cancer, suffering in this world? Does he even care about people? Well, let's go Romans chapter 5. So what do you say to that? Okay, let's go again. People want to know the word of God to get their source. So Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. You need a soda? Okay, so let's back up. You guys all heard her? Yes. yes. So this is what I like when people say this to me. I say, number one, there's more to life than this life. Amen? You, you're, not just, you're, you're, not a, you're not a body. You're a soul. Body. And is a test before God. Will you live by So God is a part of life. So then that this isn't heaven. Amen? Many people want to make it heaven, right? Many people want the Gucci's and the Bentley's and the Lambo's and the Gucci's. But they want that. This ain't heaven, amen? Heaven's up there. That's what we're promised. Jesus said, I go to a place for you. You think your dad and mom hooked you up? Just wait until your father in heaven hooks you up. That's a whole nother level. So say amen. Amen. If you think your mom and dad loves you, I agree with you. Your father in heaven loves you even greater. So the number one thing is, on this earth, you will have nekazum, to Jesus Christ. He says, on this earth, you will have problems. So John chapter 16, verse 33. Let's get a uh, young man. There we go. All God's people said, amen. So God is saying to you, just because you got baptized and you found a beautiful girl and you have a really nice house and you have a good, do you think it's going to be all good and fuzzy? No. That's a promise. He's telling you, hey, this is going to happen in your life. Don't be frightened. Don't I'm with you. Emmanuel. God is with you. And then let's get uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Hallelujah. So God is not just concerned about your past, the condemnation. He washes you, the spala. And what is he more concerned about? Your future. Your, everybody say, my future. God promises us here, well, my family comes to, but what does he promise us for the future? He promises us heaven. We're going to be with him. And then one more, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. I need a... Give me that one more time and slow down when he talks about the three parts of you. Listen. Now may the God of truth somehow sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved for humans at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, everybody said? How many parts are there of you? Your body, your flesh, right? Your body, your flesh, your soul, and your spirit. So when you talk to someone, young man, young woman, about your faith, what do you start saying? Listen, there's not just this body. I've got the six-pack that's good. There's a spirit within me. There's a soul within me. 
that defines me more than my body. Amen? So right there, you understand, yes, the body might be suffering, but the spirit and the soul is flying. I'll fly away. Body ain't flying nowhere. Body goes back to the earth. Your soul and your spirit, amen, goes to heaven. Simple say amen. amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. So when you talk about that and evil and pain, first go to the Bible and now start about your own experience, your mom's experience, your dad's experience, the experience you've heard, the testimonies you hear in church. That way you, your faith will grow. Okay? All right, third question. Uh, how can I trust the Christianity when so many Christians are hypocrites? That's a good one, right? You guys are full of hypocrites, right? How can you do it? Okay, so let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, and we will read it. Colossians Let me ask you guys a question. That was very good. Everybody said? Yes. Who did Jesus attack the most when he was living on this earth? Who? So did Jesus confront hypocrites? Okay. This is something new. You can tell your friend, you can tell your friend, uh, guy friend, girlfriend, whatever. You can say, listen, this is something new. Jesus told us all the time to have a clean heart. Some people will not have a clean heart. Others will have a clean heart. This is not something new. There will be people that are real Christians and fake Christians, right? Even Paul talks about that. Let's keep going. James chapter 1, verse 21 and verse 26. Here we go. Good. Everybody said? Yeah. So here what we see is even us. What's one of the biggest sins, especially in churches, is butfa. Someone say amen. Eh, no, 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 not me. Um, but we do deal with these sins, right? So when someone says, hey, we've got hypocrites. Listen, we're, we need Jesus just as much as you do. And there are sins that I need to deal with and I'm dealing with every day. When people try to attack you to say, you're absolutely right, there is no one who hasn't sinned, right? That's what the Bible teaches us. Everybody, every, he who has no sin cast the first stone. We're all in need of a Savior, amen? So that's why we go to church. That's why I believe in, in a Savior, because when I can't do it, cum cânta fratele Ștefi, cântă nu mai poți, he can. He can. Uh, Matthew chapter 23, verse 26. Matthew 26. So here, here's what we were saying before. The Pharisees were one of the biggest problems, right? Uh, Jesus was, would attack them, and the prostitute, the drunk person, the uh, kurva, he would, be, he would be very open because they were honest. They were right, right? The Pharisees were all worried about what they looked like. So here I'm just going to teach you a second. If in our church, New Hope, or in another church that you would teach. If more people are worried about what you wear, how your hair is like, what car you drive, you better check if that's a Bible-believing church. You better check. If a pastor wants to put you this thing before he wants to wash your feet, ask yourself, does this man care for me? Because the Bible says, yes, there is discipline when someone falls into sin. But he also says to wash one another's. I can't pick one without the other. Amen? Amen? So in our church, we have to say, God, what do you desire? Draw close to God and he will draw close to you. Let's keep going. Verse uh, number four. What makes you sure? How do you know God exists at all? 
I'm an atheist, or uh, I used to be a Christian, but I don't believe in God anymore. How do I even know God exists at all? So Romans chapter 2, verse... Oh, hallelujah for Andrew, amen. All the way in the back, he's declaring God. Everybody said? Yeah. So in their conscience, people know it's wrong, right? Um, what is that? Cannibalism. Is it wrong to eat another person? Yes. How do they know that? Did someone write it on a book? No. It is written on, the Bible says in chapter 2, verse 2, it's written on their heart. They know. They have a guilty cut. Okay, perfect example. I, I always do this. Raising my children, my, my parents are listening to me. When someone says, what color is my jacket? You already know what color it is, right? You have to override your system to say it's purple. But when you look at the jacket, everybody sees it's blue. It's not purple, it's blue, right? Everyone looks, so I Mary's glasses, red glasses. Everybody knows this. You have to override your system to lie. God's put the truth in so let's go. Romans chapter 2, verse 14. Any lady? Um, there you go. You see? They know. They already know. It's kind of built in. They know there is a supreme being, the Word of God. Let's go. John chapter 8, verse 9. I need a, I need a guy. You see, sasimsit. They felt my nui correct. Something's not right here. I'm guilty like everyone else, and they have it on their heart. So how do I know? And one more Hebrews chapter eleven. Verse 1, this is the famous chapter. Oh, that's what people said. Billy Graham used to say this all the time when people say, Can you see the wind? Can you see the effects of the wind? Can you see God? But can you feel the effects of God? Yeah, you can. The, go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. So Gen Z wants to go to the Bible. I'm giving you Bible verses. And the fifth question for tonight, why, again, we started with this, why do you go to church? Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, prayer meeting so much. What's so special about that place? Well, as people said, uh, you, you're hiding back there. God bless you, brother. I saw you, Sammy. You'll do the next one. Uh, Psalm 26, verse 8, 9, and 10. I need a young lady. Surojane. Ashtutam Osora. Got it. Didn't say just yet. We, we've heard. There you go. Amen. Uh, you want to read the next one? Psalm 63, verse 2, Soradana. Um, so all God's people always love the house of God, right? They always love to go over the house of God. I grew up in, um, obviously I love my home, but one of the places I loved was my uncle Purcell. He passed away in December a couple of years ago. Um, he had video games. Candy all the time. I loved going to my uncle's house. Well, that's how people felt about I love to go to God's house. 
It's not something I, I oh, you pray great. No, no. That's where the people of faith are. That's what I want to be. So that. As people said, amen. amen. Uh, Brother David, let me help you out. So these are five questions. I really want you, if you're a young person, middle school, high school, listen, talk to your parents. If you want to talk to me, Pastor Vox, we've been there. I remember when I started, um, as uh, I, I graduated, my first job in college, and I was talking about Jesus. And he said, how do you know? How, how do you I asked him, if you saw an angel last night in your room, how could you convince me? I don't know. I'll just tell you, I saw an angel last night. That's what I'm trying to say. I saw God. I felt God. I feel the Lord. I feel him. He said, oh, that's a good point. Brother Dave, chapter 20, verse 7. Yes. His children are blessed after him. So, Dad, hear me. If you're a young man tonight, hear me. Hear me. You're going to be a dad one day. How do you know your children are going to be blessed and not show up in some prison cell, hooked up on some crack cocaine, hooked up with a woman that's a problem? How do you know? Because you're righteous with God. Amen. Bible promises when you walk with God, you might get lost a little bit here, said the Tacheste. Walk before God. The promises of God are yes and amen. And blessed are your children after you. Now, one last thing I want to go, and then we're going to say the Nicene Creed. On the back tape, on the back of, we have that creed. I'll just, I want to say it real quick. It was 325, right after Jesus. Um, so, uh, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 26. I want to say to the young people, listen, I want to say to the young people, we don't, we're not going to go into this, but you know, as you go back to school, you start school, you need to understand. But listen, listen, listen to this. He who mistreats his and chases away his is a son who causes shame and brings So one of the things you have to understand in late is you have one dad on this earth and you have one mom on this earth. And the Bible says you are It's not my opinion. It's not Romanian tradition. It's not uh -uh. God. And if you have a problem with that verse, I'm going to tell you right now, God has a problem with you. Your dad might be a drunk. Your mom might be, I don't know. Somehow, some way, say, God, I want to honor them because you tell me to. You tell me to honor my parents. Amen? So in 325... They wanted to, uh, they started, uh, there was this sect of Kedin Church. There were some people that started putting this rumor about Jesus that he was not uh, the son of, of Mary, he was by some other thing. What they did, they did this creed, or this creed. And I just want to declare, if you want to declare with me, that's fine. I'm not forcing you. But this is one of those things they have a couple of songs. Okay, then do Jesus, so that's where all this comes from. But it, it, it would be something really good if you're a young man, young woman, to declare and to say when you have time. So I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born, not more children, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, hallelujah, to judge the living and the dead. And His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in His holy church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So tonight wasn't a sermon. Tonight was an interaction where you could see if you're a high school, college student, if you have friends, when you are confronted with questions, what do you say? Gen Z says, number one, I want to know what the Bible says. So we gave you those verses. Now is the time where you go do your own homework. What was the experience of your dad, your mom, your uncle, when they were confronted with atheists, orthodox, Adventist, Muslims? What did they confess? Get those stories. Be ready. The world is going to test you. The world is going to test you. Are you going to be faithful? Do you receive the word? I want to invite you to stand up. Next Sunday, we have China Domnule. I, I invite you to prepare yourself. Just come before the Lord. Remember, we do China communion. We do communion to remember what Jesus did for every one of us. It wasn't a preacher. It wasn't a church. It was the only son of the living God. It was Jesus Christ.